Hey everyone, we've been working all semester towards character, creating a mutant and we're now we're starting to the, the phase of the class where we're going to start characterizing the mutant. And what we did last week was we took the wild type and, the, and, our, and a mutant and we isolated protein from them. We, if you remember right, we ran a DEAE column and we generated a series of samples and I have them all laid out here in the same order they are on this plate map in the, in the protocol. I find laying out the tubes and having them in the right order makes us so I can efficiently work through doing the assay. But I want to go through this again in that we remember, I'll do a quick review. What we did is we loaded the column with lysate, which is this sample right here. And this is the 100 microliter sample that we took. Then we loaded that on the column, we added some buffer, and then we washed that, we, we basically loaded that on the column, and we collected two fractions, which I called load one and two, which I have in these positions right here. Then we loaded, then I loaded 10 milliliters of 20 millimolar tris buffer at pH 8.1, and I collected five fractions and there are these fractions right here, one through five. And then we added 10 milliliters of 0.1 molar salt and collected five fractions and they're labeled, they're, they're sitting right here. Then we added 0.3 molar, so 10 milliliters of 3.3 3 molar and those five fractions are sitting right here. And then lastly we added 0.6 molar to kind of wash everything else off the column and in this case if FO8 was present it would actually be eluded in this stage. So the 0.6 molar are in, in these locations right here. So here we have all the samples all laid out and I'm going to start going ahead and walking you through the protocol of what we're going to do. So in this protocol what we're going to what I'm planning on doing is adding all the enzyme samples to the wells and then after I do all of that then I will be adding a substrate which I have here to all of the all, all the wells and then it'll, be, it'll incubate for 20 minutes and then I'm going to re repeat loading the plate once again but we're going to go ahead and load the same samples in the same order but we're instead of using um, the buffer here, we're going to use a protein reagent. In my case today, I'm going to be using Bradford reagent because the BCA reagent hasn't arrived yet, but hopefully we'll be using BCA, which I think is actually a better protein assay for your studies whenever the class comes up. So here, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to have my load 20 milliliters of the lysate in position A1. Then I'm going to go ahead and load 10 microliters in A2. And then I'm going to load 5 microliters in A3. Now I'll dispose of the tip, come in the tip, and now I will go ahead and I will add 10 microliters of, of uh, the 10 millimolar tris buffer. I'll add 10 microliters to A2. And I will add 15 microliters to A3. So that one's down. So what I do here is I'll just return that back to a spot. Next, all of these samples are all interrelated, and I'm going to order them in the order they're collected. So I will use one tip throughout this whole process. 
So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the load one solution, take 20 microliters out, add that to A4. Next, I will take the second load buffer. We remember we collected two fractions. I will go ahead and add that to A5. And so row A is now completed. Next, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add the next row. And what I'll do here to make it a little bit faster is I will go ahead and lift the, the cap for each one of these solutions. And what I'm going to do is I, as I pipette through them, as soon as I take a, a sample out, I'll close the lid so I'll know where I am on the plate. You see here, this, sort, this corresponds to B1, this is B2, B3, B4, B5, and so on. So B1, 20 microliters. B2, and this is the wash. So I've now loaded the wash 1 through 5. Next is the 0.1 molar, 1 through 5. So that'd be B6. B6, B7, and B10. Next, I'll go ahead and open the lids for the next row. Okay, so this is 0.3 molar, number one, so it goes into C1, number two, C2, C5. Now we have the, all the 0.3 molars, now we'll go to the 0.6. So the number one, six goes into number six, which is right here. number seven, and number 10. So now on this plate, we have loaded all the enzyme assay samples. So the next thing to do is uh, you'll be loading, I did the wild type on top, and that's the only one that I had done. What I would do is I'll repeat the same things with my wild type, but in your, in your case, you're gonna be using the mutant. So I'm gonna go through here and do the same thing all over again and go through here, okay? So what I'll do is I'll load 20 microliters of lysate in F1. Ten microliters in F2. and five microliters and F3. Put that back up, clear that tip. Next, we'll go ahead and go to the, get the buffer. 10 microliters of the buffer in F2. And 15 in F3. Now we've, now we've done the same, we did the dilutions of the lysate. So we have the undiluted, the 50% diluted, and 25%. So this is 50% the active, 50 of the amount, and this is 25% of the amount. And this is just so we make sure we can get them all in line, you know, all within the assay range. This might be a lot of assay, and the assay differences between the protein assay we do and this other assay, I'm just keeping everything the same so we have a better shot at being able to uh, get all the data we need. So the next step that we need to do is 20 microliters 
of the load. And that goes, I'll go ahead and open both of these up. So this will be in F4 and F5. Next, we'll go ahead and pop the caps again. So, so in G, we have the, wa the wash 1 through 5 and point 1, 1 through 5. So we'll do the wash, goes into G1, that's number 1. Number 2 goes into G2. Number 3 goes into G3. Number four goes into G4. And five goes into G5. Next, we have the 0.1 molar washes. That starts off in six, G6, G9, and G10. Okay, next we'll go ahead and do the, the second row of the 0.3 and the 0.6 molar washes. So these go in H1 to H5, H6 to H10. So this is the 0.3, goes into H1, H, uh, H2 gets, and number five. Okay, next we go ahead and do the 0.6s. It starts off at, at well number H6, H7, 9, and 10. So now we have loaded all of the enzyme samples onto the plate. The next, day, next step we're going to do is we're going to add some PNP standard to the to the wells. So first we need to go ahead and set our pipettes to the right volumes. Throughout this exercise, we've we've put 20 micro just to let everyone understand this, what we've done is what the idea here is each of these wells currently has 20 microliter samples in them. And we're going to be adding 200 microliter samples to each one of them, of, a, of reagent to each one of them. So we'll start off by making our dilutions. We'll add 110 microliters of buffer into D2, 3, 4, and 5. And then we'll add the buffer to E2, 3, 4, and 5. So if you remember the first experiment what we did, we had you doing sterile dilutions in two ways. We had one way where we had you add solution to each of the wells on a plate, and then we took from the first well and diluted across the plate. So that's what we're going to do this time. So we're going to go ahead and take 330 microliters of PNP standard, and we'll load that in D1 and E1. So D1 and E1. So now, The first well has 330 microliters, and each of these wells afterwards has 110. So what we'll do is we're going to take 110 out of D1 and add that to D2. I will go ahead and pipette up and down to mix, 
and then withdraw 110 and add that to the next one. Pipette up and down. Then take 110 out and then add it to the next, next well. And to well number five. And then in well number six, we're just going to add 110 and leave it at that. Change the tip. And we'll do this to the, the E row as well. 110 out, dilute up and dilute by pipetting up and down. Take 110 out, add 110 to the next well. Add to the next well. To the next well. And then we'll add 110 here. Next, just to create a blank, I'll add 110 twice to 7. D7 and E7. And this is just to create a blank for our standard curve. Now we have what well, we've added on, throughout here, we've added enzyme to all to a number of wells and next stage is to go ahead and start the assay and the assay we're going to be adding 200 microliters of reagent to each well that we've added enzyme to so I have 200 microliters on here and since I'm just going to be adding them into the wells I will not be changing the pipette tip I won't be doing any mixing because I assume that adding 200 microliters to 20 will, will be essentially instantly mixed. So I'm going to start off here. We know that we have five wells here. We know that we'll add them to B1 all the way to B10. And the nice thing about it is you're adding this volume and it's easy to see which wells you've added stuff to. Adding the to the to G1 through 10, H1 to 10. Okay, I've now added 200 microliters to, across here. So currently, what we'll do is I'll say put the lid on the plate, and we'll let these incubate. And you need to let them sit for 20 minutes, and then after about 20 minutes. Uh, bring them to, to me or the TA, and we will read them on the plate reader for you. So go ahead and set your timer for 20 minutes, and let it go for 20 minutes, and send it to the reader. So I'll be back in a few minutes, and we're going to go ahead and do the protein assays.